All right, let's dive into one of the most fascinating partnerships in all of electronics, the coil and the capacitor. Now, on their own, they're pretty simple, but when you put them together, well, something really special happens. Let's check it out. I mean, at first glance, this looks a little weird, right? You'd think you're basically just creating a short circuit. But this simple combination is actually one of the most powerful and fundamental ideas in electronics. So what's the secret here? Here's how we're gonna break it down. We'll look at this curious combo and its key players. Then we're gonna run a little experiment to see it all in action, use a really cool analogy to make sense of it all, and finally get into why this whole thing matters so much. So this power couple actually has a name, the LC network. The L stands for inductor, that's our coil, and the C is for capacitor. When you hook them up like this, they create what's called a tuned circuit. But, you know, before we see them working together as a team, we've got to understand what each one brings to the table. So let's get properly introduced to our two main characters. First up, the inductor. At its heart, it's just a coil of super fine wire. We're talking sometimes thinner than a single human hair, wrapped around a core. Its whole job is to take in electrical energy and store it, but as a magnetic field. It basically soaks up energy and holds it magnetically. Now here's a super handy tip if you're ever looking at a circuit board. Inductors can look a lot like resistors, but here's the trick. Inductors usually have this glossy, shiny coating, while resistors tend to look more dull, almost powdery. A neat little way to tell them apart. And here is our other key player, the capacitor. Now just like the inductor, it stores energy, but it does it in an electric field instead of a magnetic one. And pay close attention to that nickname we've given it, the damper. Trust me, that's a huge clue for what's coming up. Okay, enough with the theory. Let's get our hands dirty and see what actually happens when we put these two together. We're gonna wire them up in a simple circuit and measure exactly what they're doing. So for our test, we're using a basic oscillator. The whole point of an oscillator is to create a steady repeating signal, a wave, or what we call a frequency. We can measure that frequency to see the effect our LC network is having. Now, before we even flip the switch, we can do the math. There's a formula for this, and based on the specific parts we're using, the math says we should get a frequency of about 3.06 megahertz. So that's our target. And check it out. We plug everything in, turn it on, and our real world measurement is 3.04 megahertz. That is incredibly close. It's awesome. It means our circuit is working just like the textbook says it should. The coil and capacitor are doing their thing perfectly together. Okay, but this is where it gets really interesting. What is the capacitor actually doing in there? To figure that out, let's just take it out. We'll leave the inductor all by itself. What do you think is gonna happen in that frequency? Whoa, look at that. The frequency more than doubled. It skyrocketed all the way up to 6.4 megahertz. So clearly that capacitor was having a huge effect. It was really holding that frequency down. It was acting like a break, or you could say a damper. So if taking the capacitor away lets the frequency just run wild, what do you think happens if we do the opposite? Let's try putting in a bigger capacitor, one that has even more capacitance. And yep, just as you'd probably guess, the frequency drops even lower, down to 2.77 megahertz. So the rule is pretty clear. The more capacitance you add, the lower the frequency gets. But why? This, this is where it all clicks into place. To really gut what's going on, you don't need any complex math. All you need to do is think about your car. This really is the aha moment. This is it. This is the key to the whole thing. The relationship between an inductor and a capacitor is almost exactly the same as the relationship between the big coil spring and the shock absorber in your car's suspension. And this breaks it down perfectly. The car's spring stores and releases energy. That's what makes it bounce. The inductor stores and releases electromagnetic energy, which creates an oscillation, an electronic bounce. The shock absorber's job is to control that bounce, to dampen it. And that's exactly what our capacitor does. It dampens the electronic oscillation. And all of a sudden, our experiment makes perfect sense. Remember when we took the capacitor out? That was just like ripping the shock absorbers off a car. All you have left is the spring, in our case, the inductor, and you get wild, crazy, uncontrolled bouncing. That's why our frequency shot through the roof to 6.4 megahertz. And what about when we added that bigger capacitor? 
Well, you guessed it. That's like installing really stiff, heavy-duty shock absorbers. It slows that bounce way, way down. That's why our frequency dropped to 2.77 megahertz. In fact, if you use a big enough capacitor, you can stop the bounce altogether, just like a shock absorber that's so stiff it won't move at all. So it's a fantastic analogy, this whole bouncing car thing. But why does any of this matter? What can we actually do with a controlled electronic bounce? The answer is pretty much everything that's wireless. Seriously, think about tuning an old radio. Every station is broadcasting on its own unique frequency, its own specific bounce. When you turn that dial, you're literally changing a capacitor in a tuned circuit. You're adjusting the stiffness of your electronic shock absorber until your radio's bounce perfectly matches the station's bounce. That's how you tune into just one signal and ignore all the others. And that same idea is the foundation for your phone, your Wi-Fi, everything. So this simple partnership, the spring and the damper, the coil and the capacitor, it's a masterclass in control. It's about taming a wild bounce to create the precise, predictable world of modern technology. It really makes you wonder, doesn't it? What other hidden shock absorbers are quietly at work controlling the tech that we use every single day? Thanks for joining me.